Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joe Ellis, and today we're talking about my trip to WPPI. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I was invited out to Las Vegas for WPPI to speak at the Olympus booth. And man, did I have a great week. It was so much fun getting to know the Olympus community and all the photographers that showed up to the booth. I really enjoyed hanging out with other visionaries like Joe Edelman, Tracy McGlosky, and Gabby Olmeda. And I want to give a huge thank you to the Olympus staff and all the people that were there working with the booth. Everybody was amazing, and it was just a great time to get to know everyone. So thank you all very much. Okay, so I wanted to do a brief overview of what I talked about at WPPI. And the title of my talk was Fast Light on Location, which is I think is a perfect topic for wedding photographers because that is exactly what we have to do. We have to work fast almost all the time. And you have to throw into the mix also that we're constantly being sort of given all of the parameters that we're working in. We can't choose the location. We oftentimes can't do much with the light and of course uh, the weather. So given all those things, all those constraints that we're working in, we really need a very versatile toolkit that we can use quickly on location. And so I wanna talk about a few of the tools that I developed over the years to kind of help make my images just a little bit more my style than um, just the basic uh, type of pictures that you can take. And I really think that as you kind of go through this, it's really important as you, as you work to think about ways that you can customize your pictures, ways that you can add your little signature to what you're doing, little pieces of kit that you can use to kind of elevate your work beyond what is the lowest, the easiest or the lowest hanging fruit that you can find. So these are four little tips that I use on the wedding day to kind of make a little bit better picture than I could otherwise. Okay, the first one's simple. The first one is fill flash. Fill flash is a wonderful technique um, in two different ways. Um, you can either use it to um, on the same side as your main light or on the opposite side of your main light. But fill flash on a basic level is just firing a flash at the exposure that is at a light level less than the main light. So it's just there to fill in shadows, to bring light in from another part or to add a little bit of light um, to a shadow. So for me, uh, the example that I used on a wedding day, one of the simplest ones for um, fill flash is like when you're taking a groom's portrait um, at a hotel. So oftentimes, or like every time I'm at a hotel, there's a window that I'm kind of using as my main light source. So if I was to draw a schematic of what this lighting scenario looks like, it would be like this. Here's our big window. And this will be our groom. And I usually place him right there by the, on the far side of the window so that I get a really beautiful wrap of light kind of com coming from the window. And so if you look at a, an example photo that I have over here from WPPI, you can see um, you know, we have this beautiful sort of Rembrandt lighting kind of happening, wrapping around him. But the downside here is that oftentimes there is a ton of fall off. So what you're seeing is a very shadowy side over here on the left hand side of the frame. And what I want to do with my fill flash is I want to kick this portrait up just a smidgen by adding a fill flash coming from the opposite side. So the flashes I've been using recently um, at my weddings and for all of my shoots are these little flashes from Olympus, the FL700 WRs. Um, I also still have all of my Godox flashes, but and any flash will do for this. But what I like about these little units, guys, I have to report back after doing a few more weddings and a lot more shoots with them, is that I really enjoy the size of these little flashes. Um, these you know, are full featured flashes with great power, recycle, build quality, all that kind of good stuff. And of course, this is the first flash that Olympus has given us with full radio communication. But for me, compared to the Godox units, one thing that I'm loving about this flash is that it's kind of that Goldilocks size for Micro Four Thirds. Um, you know, the Godox flashes are amazing, very high powered flashes, but they're a little bit heavy on top of the camera. Um, or they're maybe a little underpowered because I have both the large and small. 
But this FL700WR is a real Goldilocks in size. It's just that sort of great um, middle ground where you have all the features, all the recycle, all the power that you want in a size that fits really well on top of Micro Four Thirds. So I just wanted to say that. But you just take your flash, right? And you want to use a little bit of fill flash. And so I would have a, either a transmitter or a second flash in my bag as, to act as my transmitter. And my on-camera flash would not be set to fire for this exposure. It would just be controlling the other light. And then typically um, I have like an umbrella that's on me and I have these rogue uh, flash modifiers. So you could use a small soft box, you could use a flash bender or a little grid and you could add a little bit of fill light. So this little grid is one of the tools that I just love using. And so in this case, I would just recruit one of the groomsmen to kind of stand on the opposite side of the window. And then I would have it firing on the groom, adding a little bit of fill flash. And that's what we see here in the second exposure. And I really like this way to this little kick of light because it's separating him from the background. It's adding a little visual interest to the picture and it's not letting that side of his face fall off into complete shadow. Another time when, um, Fill flash is really, really helpful, is when you're shooting backlit to the sun. So first let me just finish my drawing here. So here's my little strobe and our little modifier, and we're just firing a little bit of light from very close distances onto the groom. So that was the first scenario, and those were the pictures there. The second time that this is really, really helpful is if you're shooting backlit to the sun. So if I had the sun here and I have my subject here and here is camera, um, then I usually have a ton of light kind of coming this direction, right? And what happens there is you get a ton of contrast in your picture, right? So the background's really bright and then the shadowy side of your subject is clean in terms of doesn't have any harsh shadows on them, but oftentimes can be quite dark if you're exposing for the background. So one of the things that you can do to combat this is just to use a little bit of fill flash. And the beauty here is if you fire the fill flash at like TTL minus one or minus two or at a manual mode where it's a lot less than the ambient light, then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fill in the shadows. You're gonna add catch lights to the eyes and it'll be a sneaky kind of flash because you won't necessarily think to yourself, oh, they use a flash on this picture. It'll just be a way to kind of elevate the overall uh, image that way. The other thing it's doing when you're adding a little bit of light to the shadow is you're reducing the overall contrast of the image. So in my case, the, uh, my go-to for soft light is an umbrella. I usually use a shoot through and I might have that right there. It would be adding some nice modeling and it would be adding a little bit of catch lights to the eyes, like I said. The other thing that a fill flash will do outdoors for you is it will clean up color cast. So if you have a green grass in front of your subject and you're looking to get clean light on them, then adding the fill flash will get rid of all of that green for you. So another really typical use of fill flash. Okay. The second lighting scenario I'll talk about is using that grid um, in another creative way, and that is on access. So here are the two pictures that I uh, made at WPPI, and I always advocate starting with the basic image and then kicking it up. But if we have a bride standing here, and here is camera, my first go-to way to make an exposure of the bride, if I was working indoors and needed to use flash, would just be to use my shoot through umbrella. And I would make a basic exposure of her. And the beauty here is the umbrella will throw a lot of soft light everywhere and it will make a nice photo. And that's what we have here on the left. And what I like about this picture is that the lighting is even from top to bottom. And of course, um, you know, it's nice soft light. And that would be the place to start. But what if you wanted to kick this up one notch? What's one way you could play with the light to kind of add your little signature to it? One thing you could do is use a gridded flash on axis to highlight part of the image um, that is being hit by the same light source that the umbrella is providing. So if I just put a gridded flash above this light, then what I have from the umbrella is nice soft light that's hitting everything. And then like a really narrow beam of light coming from the little strobe, just hitting her face. And the net result is that you have highlighted part of the image, you have cleaned up the shadows on her face, you've done a little instant Photoshop in essence, and you're able to kind of kick it up just a smidgen. So on the right here is that same picture, the same exact settings for the umbrella light, but instead we've added that little gridded light and it's hitting her just kind of in the face. 
and you can see that it's cleaned up the shadows and added a little highlight to her and it even kind of gives the eye a very nice entry point into the image because her face becomes kind of the brightest most interesting part of the photo rather than having everything lit evenly so that's gridded on axis fill and one of the really great ways you can do this is you can do this with natural light. Like let's say you're out in some less than ideal uh, natural light conditions and you're wishing like, I just wanna get rid of that shadow, I wanna clean this up, I wanna add a little bit of punch to that part of the image. Your little rogue flash grid will allow you to just add a little pocket of light wherever you want it. And because you're concentrating the light down, you actually don't need as much power, so the recycle is easy. And these little rogue flash grids actually pop out of here and you can control the beam angle, not only with distance, but with different grids you can slip inside. So I will do that with natural light. I will do it on axis fill. I'll do it indoors if I want to create drama. And one of the nice things about using the gridded flash and an umbrella in conjunction with one another is that because you can control the power of both, you can control the contrast. So you could turn the umbrella down, turn the uh, gridded flash up and expose for the gridded flash, making the rest of the picture darker, so on and so forth. So a hugely versatile tool on the wedding day. But one of the best ways to do this, in my opinion, is where you're sneaking it inside of the soft light source. So we have the umbrella and we have the gridded flash coming from the same direction and the grid kind of hides inside the soft light. Okay, the third type of lighting I wanna talk about is where we're actually using these techniques plus one of our CTO gels to kind of work with color. So one of the tools I always carry with me on the wedding day is a CTO gel. And CTO gels, if you have never used one before, are sort of an orange uh, piece of cellophane that you put over the front of your uh, flash that turns the color temperature of your strobe from daylight to tungsten or the light bulb setting. And the beauty here is that when you do that, it, the color temperature of your flash now matches any kind of tungsten light source in the room. So if you're working at a reception, for example, and you want your flash to look more subtle, to look more natural to the room, then you definitely want to try using CTO gels. Now, Back to the matter at hand. If you are shooting in a daylight balanced environment, like in the church narthex or foyer, or even outside like at blue hour, for example, by turning your camera's white balance to tungsten, you'll turn everything more blue. And so I constantly, because I'm gelling my lights, have this available to me. If I walk into an environment and I change my uh, white balance setting to tungsten, I can turn any kind of um, natural light environment more blue. And this works really well in a lot of places like churches or receptions, things like that. And using that sort of blue and white color combo can be really, really pretty. So here's what I'm talking about. If we, in this picture, I'm gonna show you guys here, I have both a bride and a groom. And what I'm doing is I'm using two flashes. So I have one over here and one over here with little grids on them. Okay, and they both have a CTO gel. And then I'm gonna put camera here. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm casting two beams of light, right, with CTO gels. If the camera is on tungsten, and these are on CTO, that have CTO gels, then the camera's white balance and the CTO gel are in agreement, which means that the camera sees the flashlight now with the CTO gel as white, okay? And then anything that's ambient, anything that's daylight balance is gonna turn blue. So in this case, in this photo from WPBI, I actually have a third light in place, and that is in an umbrella, and it's just throwing uh, regular white light onto the scene, which is being recorded blue by the camera because the camera's set to tungsten white balance. So that would be here, and there's no CTO. Now, these little guys are casting really narrow beams that are kind of just hitting these guys just in the face. And that's giving you this nice fall off and so you see how their skin tone is still rendering kind of neutral, but by the time I get to her dress, it's falling off into the blues. And that's the kind of cool thing you can do with color. Now you could gel your lights any color that you want and change things to red, purple, orange, or whatever you want. 
But for me, I'm carrying CTO gels on the wedding day. I'm carrying CTO gels to my events. So I always have this available to me. And because I'm working with ambient light and turning it blue, that's one of the really easy ways to use a camera to change the color. So um, you can do lots with gels, obviously, but this is a trick that you typically have in your bag at a moment's notice when you're working on a wedding day. And so you could use um, any number of lights, any number of flash modifiers. I really like these little grids, um, but you could be using the flash benders or whatever it is that you want to kind of modify the light. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is at a wedding reception when you want to um, take advantage of um, super fast recycle in these FL700s. So one of the features that these uh, flashes had that I really wanted to test out was the idea that they can recycle at 10 frames per second. And so there's two instances uh, on a wedding day when I know I'm gonna be using flash and I probably want a super fast recycle times. And that is during a first dance when it's highly choreographed and during an exit. So I went out to test this at a couple of weddings and this is working brilliantly. But the idea here is that if a couple is running out like under confetti, for example, and you want to take a bunch of photos between the time they get out the door to the time they get in the, the limo or the rolls or whatever it is, you would really like very consistent, very fast recycle times on your flash because when confetti is falling, you always want, you're always thinking to yourself, oh, I want to get one of them where their faces aren't obscured, where their expressions are good uh, while they're being, you know, pelted <laughs> with little pieces of paper. Or if they have learned a highly choreographed dance and they're going to do a big dip or spin or something in the middle or at the end of the dance, and you want to catch that moment when their expressions are perfect, when they're looking at each other, when the dress is doing just the right thing, then having the super fast recycle of the FL700 WRs is super helpful. So I did a first dance scenario at WPPI where I kind of had them do a big dip for me and I was using this fast recycle time to kind of show that this is actually getting consistent results at 10 frames a second. So uh, here's the photo and I want to talk about a couple of things I did to kind of help myself out. The first one is that um, when I put flashes up at a reception, if this is the band, I will typically put two flashes out and I will put one in group B and one in group C. And these two little flashes, um, I do one thing to them, and that is I want to flag them a little bit so that their light is not falling absolutely everywhere, and I'm not always getting a ton of flare. If you like flare, leave your flashes unmodified. If you um, want to control the light so that the background, so that the room, the ambiance of the room is not uh, drastically altered by all of this flash, then um, this technique works really well. So you would take your little your flashes and you would use something like this uh, rogue flash bender and I would put these on the flashes and, and then aim them at the dance floor. And then I would manipulate these little arms which are movable and bendable so that they are uh, restricting the light from falling left and right and up. Because you don't, the last thing that you want to do is light the ceiling if you don't want your dance floor looking like a gymnasium. So these two flashes are firing at the couple, sort of crisscrossing across the dance floor. And when I'm shooting receptions, they're typically on a very low power, like one over 128 on both of these lights. And that's because I'm typically shooting at f2.8 at ISO 1600. So I don't typically need a ton of light in order to get a good exposure. So these are casting light just like this. And what I'm going to do here is put the camera here and I'll put my couple right in the middle. And then I have a flash on camera. And my flash on camera is usually for this scenario, like a run out or a first dance, is pointed straight ahead. And the reason is that I don't want that flash actually putting out too much light. I like the primary lights to come from the sides. I want those really bright highlights that are coming from both edges of them. So this light is typically put on like maybe 1 64th power. And then I have a third light hitting them. So now I have three lights running during this first dance, all of which are firing at 10 frames a second. And the result is that it looks like great stage lighting that's kind of hitting them during this moment. And the result for me is that I can take as many frames as fast as humanly possible to kind of give myself the best chance of capturing the ultimate moment when the hair looks good, when the dress looks good, when the expressions are perfect. So there are two things that you have to do in order to make this mode work. Uh, the first thing is all the flashes have to be at 1 32nd power or under in order to get this kind of recycle. And you need to be using really good uh, AA rechargeables like Eneloops.
and I use Interloop Pros and it works fine. So twice during the day, um, I might set this up and it's really, really simple to do. Like I can control all of this from my FL700 on camera and then I'll just set this up as my commander, set it to 64th and I'll set the other two at 128th and I'm ready to rock. If I'm just shooting a run out, I'll usually have my, uh, my second shooter, my wife, uh, following behind the couple and she'll have one of these flashes and it'll be firing from behind them to kind of give it a nice rim light and then I'll have one on camera. So those were the techniques that I shared at WPPI. Um, hopefully you guys saw a little bit of the behind the scenes here as I was editing this stuff together and uh, you saw the example photos. So, um, you know, if you're a wedding photographer, I highly uh, suggest if you haven't ever tried any of these to give it a go. If you have an idea or a technique that you want to share in the comments, I would love to read it. And if you guys have questions about how any of this works, please hit me up and I'd be happy to discuss. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.